Is a ketogenic diet any better than a Mediterranean style diet for managing blood sugar in people with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes? A new study suggests that they're pretty similar, but as we look into the details, these are some important details to see how this study was structured so we can learn about maybe when one diet may be better or not as good as the other. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I know that wasn't exactly like a rousing intro, but you know, sometimes the, the details of these studies are really important. And as we talk about a lot, the headlines don't always match the details. So this study is called The Effect of a Ketogenic Diet versus a Mediterranean Diet on Hemoglobin A1C in Individuals with Prediabetes and Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus, the Interventional Keto Med Randomized Crossover Trial. This paper was published by Drs. Christopher Gardner and Lucia Ronica and colleagues from Stanford University. We've had Lucia, of course, many times on our channel, um, so I highly recommend those interviews with her. But getting into the study, what this was was there were 33 individuals with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes who were randomized in a crossover fashion to either eat a ketogenic diet, a whole foods ketogenic diet, or what they called a Mediterranean plus diet. And it was basically 12 weeks on each diet. For the first four weeks, all the food was provided. Interestingly, they provide 2,800 calories um, worth of food, but was told them just to eat, you know, whatever they wanted. They obviously didn't have to eat all of it. And then for the next eight weeks, they were on their own. Then they'd have a washout period and cross over to the other um, to the other diet. So first thing, interestingly, even by providing all those 2,800 calories and ad lib eating, uh, whichever diet group you're on, they ate about 300 calories less than their baseline diet. So right away, you could see it was a higher satiety per calorie diet, no matter which one they did. So that's an interesting finding. But first, let's talk about the what the diets were. So the whole foods keto diet, obviously, by the name implies they were uh, um, really encouraging whole foods and not products. Carbs were between 20 and 50 grams per day. Protein was 1.5 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight, so right in the in a good range for protein. And the rest, they said, was fat. But they did encourage um, at least three servings of non-starchy vegetables per day. Then for what the, they call the Mediterranean Plus diet, it was basically based on the Mediterranean diet pyramid, but... They said avoiding added sugar, avoiding refined grains, and so the majority of their protein was from fish, um, and the more, majority of their fat was from olive oil. Now, the other interesting difference is how they managed medications. When they were when the subjects were about to start the whole food ketogenic diet, they immediately stopped sulfonylureas, um, which is an insulin secreting type of medication. Whereas when they were on the Mediterranean Plus diet, they cut the sulfonylurea in half. So that's really interesting because, you know, for safety, they have to do that, but they expected the ketogenic diet to have better blood sugar lowering effects. So they were more aggressive at reducing medications compared to the Mediterranean Plus. So that makes it a little interesting when interpreting the, the primary endpoint because the primary endpoint was reduction in hemoglobin A1C, which statistically was the same. It was a 9% reduction in the ketogenic diet and a 7% reduction in the Mediterranean plus diet. But remember, that's with significant differences in the aggressiveness of reducing medication. So when you adjust for the medications, then it was statistically significant that the ketogenic diet lowered the A1C more than the Mediterranean plus diet. So that was interesting. But also they had what they called exploratory outcomes. So these weren't primary outcomes, you know, and they, I guess they weren't even secondary outcomes, they were exploratory outcomes of using a CGM. And what they found was on the whole foods ketogenic diet, um, the average glucose was significantly lower by the CGM and or at 8% lower versus 2% lower for the Mediterranean Plus. So that's interesting why that would be so different compared to the A1C. And you can come up with lots of theories, but you know they are all theories at this point. Um, but there was also better time and range for the whole food ketogenic diet. So from a blood sugar standpoint, the ketogenic diet was a little bit better than uh, the Mediterranean Plus diet. Now, some of the other findings... Um, lower triglycerides on the ketogenic diet, not a surprise. Um, and actually greater weight loss for those who started with the ketogenic diet. If you started with the, the, the Mediterranean Plus diet, there wasn't greater weight loss transitioning to the keto diet. But when you started with the keto diet, that's where people saw their greatest weight loss. So that's interesting as well, but then usually maintained on the Mediterranean diet. Um, some of what they called as the negatives in the paper was on the ketogenic diet, LDL went up 10%, and there was a decreased intake of thiamine, folate, and vitamin C. So these, these are interesting. They kind of made a big deal about it in the paper, about the danger of LDL going up 10%. 
I, I've got a little bit of a problem with that because if you look back at like the Verta Health trial, um, when they published their one-year data, they published a, a, a separate paper looking at calculated cardiovascular risk. And in that, in that trial, the average LDL increase was 10% but the calculated cardiovascular risk decreased by 12% despite the LDL going up 10%. And here's why. ApoB, the better marker um, for cardiovascular risk, did not change. The small LDL particles went down. The triglycerides went down. The HDL went up. The VLDL went down. Basically, there were all these other benefits, including obviously the blood sugar going down and the insulin going down. So there were other um, metabolic benefits and lipid benefits that completely negated any rise in LDL. So a 10% rise in LDL with no change in ApoB is likely pretty meaningless when all those other beneficial effects happen. So they didn't measure to that degree of granularity in this trial. They just saw LDL go up. So they kind of said, oh, that's dangerous. LDL is going up. But I think they, we can't reach that conclusion because we have scientific evidence to the contrary, right? That no, this probably isn't um, uh, concerning in this situation. And that's why I think it's important for people to be checking VLDLs, to be checking small dense LDLs, to be checking ApoB, and not just going by LDL itself. Now, there's some controversy within, you know, the cardiology community about checking those markers. And basically the argument is, look, if your decision is whether to put somebody on a statin or not, it probably doesn't matter. Yeah, but that's not the decision here, right? The decision is what's happening to you from a lipid and metabolic standpoint with dietary changes. And that's much more important where you, I think you do need those um, extra details. So that's my two cents on that. The other part, the decreased intake of thiamine, folate, and vitamin C, decreased intake does not equal a deficiency. So I'm not sure how important that is, but again, they kind of made a big point of that um, in the paper. But so the take home is though, either diet is a good approach to start with, right? Like if you're focusing on mostly whole foods, reducing sugars, reducing refined grains, um, either approach shows benefit, showed reduction in A1C, showed weight loss, and help them decrease their calorie intake from their baseline calorie. So both diets were a better, higher satiety per calorie diet. And that's a big thing, right? We want to be able to get adequate nutrition, reduce our calories, and not drive up our hunger. That's sort of the, the, the secret mix, I guess, for improving your health and weight loss. Now, it looked like the ketogenic diet was better from a, a blood sugar standpoint, um, modestly so, and better from a weight loss standpoint if you started with it, modestly so. But I don't want that to take away from both diets were improvements. Focusing on whole foods, reducing sugars, reducing refined grains, getting your non-starchy vegetables, getting adequate protein. So you, the, the Mediterranean diet still had a good amount of protein from fish um, and from some white meat and lean meats. So that's still a good intervention. So um, I guess one take home is, look, both are improvements. You can start with either one and you're likely going to improve your health. And that's why at Diet Doctor, we want to provide resources for different types of diets, right? We have so much information on ketogenic diets, moderate low carb diets, and now we're putting out more information on higher satiety diets. So if you wanted to eat higher carb or Mediterranean style diet, that's okay. The key is to focus on a higher satiety version of those diets to achieve your health goals. And if you're following a keto diet and not achieving all your health goals, you can transition to a higher satiety keto goal. These are all options, right? It's not that one is absolutely better than the other, um, but there are options. We can't pretend there's one diet for everyone, but these versions, this higher satiety concept can fit with any of these diets. And I think this trial kind of shows that pretty well. So hopefully this was helpful. If you thought it was, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button, and we'll see you here next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody.